Hello, my name is Aiden Warner, and this is Group 6 proposal for the Solar Transportation Design Project. Group 6 consists of myself, Aiden Warner, Stephen Bailey, Aaron Mulhern, Pierre, and Miles Johnson. The problem we're faced with is that Sparkyville needs a form of transportation in order to transport its tourists 20 blocks across Sparkyville. In order to make a good prototype, it needs to be able to stop at a red light autonomously. It needs to be able to drive solely off of solar power, meaning that the motors are powered completely by solar energy. It needs to be able to carry at least one driver and two adult passengers. It needs to be able to fully contain the passengers for safety for the entirety of the ride and needs to be able to carry one small and one large piece of baggage needs to be able to drive in a straight path 20 blocks across Sparkyville, and it cannot cost more than $80. A ranked list of criteria that our group came up with to rank different ideas we had is speed, capacity, safety, cost, aesthetics, and innovation. Speed and capacity are the most important because the, there are more requirements based off of those because the car needs to be able to get people quickly and efficiently, and it needs to be able to carry at least three adults and at least two suitcases. Safety came next because everything needs to be able to stay in the vehicle at all times. Beneath that was cost because that's an important factor and $80 for the prototype isn't very high in order to be able to create an effective prototype. And then aesthetics and innovation are things that are nice and important to have, but they are less important than the fundamental criteria. We talked and listened to a couple of the stakeholders, uh, including some from the city of Sparkyville itself. The taxi fleet commissioner said that she thought it was important to make sure that the cars were autonomously able to stop at a red light, but the cars still needed to be able to have drivers in them to not put all of her drivers out of work. The mayor of Sparkyville stressed the importance of environmental awareness, meaning that the entire car should run off of solar power. In addition, tourist safety, again stopping at red lights, but also being able to keep tourists within the vehicles, is another really important thing to him. He also talked to a couple frequent travelers to Sparkyville to listen to what they requested out of our transportation solution. Jeffrey Douglas is a fan of golfing and has large bags and wanted to make sure that whatever form of transportation we came up with was able to store those large bags. Susan Botts wanted to make sure that the vehicle was handicap capable so that she could go places spontaneously and hang out with her friends more often. And Zach and Julie Hernandez, who have a family with children, wanted to make sure that whatever transportation system we came up with was able to transport an entire family in just one vehicle. Okay, so in terms of our design and structure, we researched that uh, the, best, the best way to have a good foundation that is both sturdy and um, light is to have a wooden chassis. As seen in this picture right here, we'd have a wooden chassis and that could easily mount a motor on top and uh, it could support the weight of our car, of our passengers, of our other of our solar panels, other, other electrical stuff. And uh, we wanted to make use of rubber tires as well so we could have that, um, that easy, steady friction where we could uh, accelerate right away. We wanted to have a narrow car. Um, we also wanted to have a car that had its uh, center of gravity relatively low to the ground so that it doesn't tip over and it can also accelerate fairly easily. Um, and we wanted to have low friction, like I just said, with the, between the wheels and the ground, and that comes with low weight as well. Um, so in terms of solar panels, we found out that uh, solar panels are relatively low in efficiency. They, uh, it's well below 10, and um, they require direct sunlight in order to fully, be, to fully have their efficiency, which is low, but um, they require direct light and there are tons of different types of solar panels. So in order to truly find out which solar panels is best for our project, we need to experiment with a lot of different types and we need to make sure we have direct light exposure on testing day and even trial day when we're finding out like which solar panel is gonna be best for us. Uh, for gear ratios, we found out that um, 
the like all like lo like locomotives like cars they all use gear trains and they all these gear trains have different ratios behind them and have belts going around and uh, um, the output minus the input gear is going to yield the gear ratio and it happens to be that a high gear ratio is going to mean a low speed output but a high torque output so like if we needed to haul a ton of weight at not a very high speed high gear ratio would be the solution but that's not necessarily our objective here so we need to make sure that we have a balanced out gear ratio so we can have both speed and torque and not sacrifice too much of one of the other. We conducted a series of three experiments to help us determine what solar cell configuration of solar cells and gear ratio to use in our design. The first experiment we did tested for the efficiency of each type of solar cell. Out of these tests, we found that the 110 by 140 millimeter solar panel gave us the best efficiency of 16.77% and we decided to go with that solar panel to use in our design. Our second experiment, we tested the configuration of solar panels. Now that we knew which solar panel to use, we tested three different cons configurations of the four solar panels. The first configuration we did was in series, the second in parallel, and then the last configuration was two in series, wired in parallel. Out of these configurations, we determined that the two in series, wired in parallel, would be the best option for us to use because of its highest power. In our third experiment, we tested for gear ratios. So we had five different combinations of gear ratios, and we ended up going with the one-to-one -one gear ratio because it gave us the best combination of speed and torque. Our first design option was what we called the box design. The main feature of this design was that it was basically a box with three rows of seat, seats for passengers and then the last row being half a seat and then leaving the space for your luggage. The solar panels would be configured in a way that they would be sitting on the roof of the car. Our second design option was basically a car with a big trunk. So this was similar to the box design but it only had two rows for passengers and it had a trunk in the back. And then the solar panels would be basically just on top of it angled at the sun. Our third design option was like a double-decker bus, so it had rows of passengers in the first and second floor of it with the solar panels sitting right on top of the roof. In the overall position matrix, we found that the trunk design worked best for the overall score. However, we used elements from each of the designs to come up with our final prototype design. This orthographic drawing shows the design features incorporated from the three original ideas proposed solar panels from the box idea, the storage capacity from the trunk design, and automated features from the double deck design. Characteristic components of this design are two rows that can fit two people each, a trunk that will be able to hold all the luggage we need, and solar panels, configurations, and gear ratios found to be optimal within our experiments. We also decided to use rubber bands as seat belts to increase the safety This activity diagram shows the order from when we start the car to when it finishes moving. The order is that the car starts and then if there's sunlight, it will take that energy and spin the wheels to create movement. And then when the red light is detected, it'll stop the car and then when the green light's detected, it'll continue to move. This material list shows all the materials we are planning on using within our final design. We start certain materials to show ones that we may or may not use depending on advanced features and if we'll be able to incorporate them within our design. This is the more material components of our design as opposed to the electrical ones. The final cost will be estimated to be within $60 and $65 depending on how much time we have to incorporate advanced designs. The design's calculated speed 68.37 miles per hour. We got this by finding the date that we would run our experiment on and calculating the lux from the sun on that day. And then we used that to find the amps that would be translated into the motors. And then based on the wheel size, we found the speed in miles per hour. Potential enhancements we may add to our design include a photoresistor that would work with headlights to turn on at night, a toggle switch that would be able to turn off power to the car manually, brake lights that would be able to stop the car
car when it sees the red light, and wheels that reverse when braking to add more control to the brakes. Overall, the design that we chose is going to be very efficient. This design is going to stay under budget, be really fast, and keep the passengers safe at all times. The added automated features and the innovative design will also give customers a taste of luxury and will be able to get them to their destination in a quick matter of time.